Dr. Fauci, we're here to investigate the COVID-19 pandemic and to explore lessons learned, positive or negative, and to better prepare for future pandemics. That may have been why the Republican chairman of that committee, who you just heard from, Brad Wenstrup, was there. He is a physician whose questioning of Dr. Fauci today was mostly respectful. But Marjorie Taylor Greene showed up, too, and her uncouth performance included refusing to call Dr. Anthony Fauci a doctor. She, as the consistent front runner for stupidest member of the House of Representatives in history, actually told Dr. Fauci that she doesn't think he is a doctor. Most Republican members of the committee spent their time trying to indict Dr. Fauci for what they falsely said was his refusal to even consider that COVID-19 could have originated in a lab in China. The top Democrat on the committee ranking member, Raul Ruiz, who is also a physician, summarized what the committee's Republican-led investigation has discovered. Over the past 15 months, the select subcommittee has poured over more than 425,000 pages of documents provided to us by government agencies, universities, and private citizens. We have conducted more than 100 hours of closed-door interviews with 20 current and former federal officials and scientists. And what we have found is the following. Dr. Fauci did not fund research through the Echo Health Alliance grant that caused the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Fauci did not lie about gain and function research in Wuhan, China. And Dr. Fauci did not orchestrate a campaign to suppress the lab leak theory. After 15 months, the select subcommittee still does not possess a shred of evidence to substantiate these extreme allegations that Republicans have levied against Dr. Fauci for nearly four years. In his opening statement, Dr. Fauci explained how his leadership led to the quick development of life-saving COVID vaccines. Prior to my retirement from federal service in December 2022, I had been at the NIH for 54 years and director of NIAID for more than 38 years. In those posts, I was deeply involved in the scientific and public health response to several infectious diseases outbreaks, including HIV AIDS, pandemic flu, Ebola, and Zika. And so, under my leadership, we were well positioned to respond to COVID-19. For at least two decades prior to the COVID outbreak, we at NIAID had invested billions of dollars in research on mRNA technology and immunogen design, both of which led to the swift development of COVID vaccines. Less than 11 months after the identification of this new virus, safe and highly effective vaccines were widely available, an unprecedented accomplishment in the history of vaccinology that saved tens of millions of lives worldwide. Tens of millions of lives saved by the work of Dr. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Fauci read one of his own emails urging at the very beginning of the pandemic research on a possible lab leak of that virus. I now quote from an email that I sent to Professor Farrar on February 1, 2020, quote, Jeremy, I just got off the phone with Christian Anderson and he related to me his concern about the furin site mutation in the spike protein of the virus. I told him that as soon as possible, he and Eddie Holmes should get a group of evolutionary biologists together to carefully examine the data to determine if his concerns are validated and they should report it to the appropriate authorities. I would imagine that in the USA, this would be the FBI, and in the UK, it would be MI5. In the meantime, I will alert my U.S. government official colleagues of my conversation with you and Christian and determine what further investigation they recommend. Let us stay in touch. Best regards, Tony, unquote. It is inconceivable that anyone who reads this email could conclude that I was trying to cover up the possibility of a lab leak. I have always kept an open mind to the different possibilities. Would you have any reason to cover up uh, any new scientific evidence relating to the origins of the COVID-19 virus? Absolutely not. And that's the reason why it was important to get people together that to discuss this in a transparent way. 
Have you spent your whole life trying to determine the causes of infectious diseases and then to stop them to protect the American people? Yes, I have. My main job during the COVID pandemic was to play a role with my team at the Vaccine Research Center to develop a safe and effective vaccine. And we did that in an unprecedented short period of time, never seen before in the annals of vaccinology. As we all know, that vaccine and those vaccines have resulted in saving of hundreds of thousands of lives in the United States and millions of lives throughout the world. He didn't have to be there. Dr. Fauci was not subpoenaed, but there he was with his wife sitting patiently and attentively and supportively behind him. He was testifying voluntarily, voluntarily to a Republican controlled committee. Dr. Fauci had already voluntarily testified in private to that same committee for 14 hours. And in those 14 hours, the Republicans could not find a single thing to back up the horrible lies that some of them have told about Dr. Anthony Fauci. When Republicans couldn't come close to making their accusations about Dr. Fauci stick today because the kind of thing that works on Fox does not work when Anthony Fauci is there to answer questions, the Republicans shifted to complaining about cruelty of animal research. Well, the animal experiments that are conducted by and funded by NIH go through strict uh, uh, regulations of the proper use of animals in research. So I'm not, Congressman, with all due respect, I'm not trying to be confrontative. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. No one knew what she was talking about. Congressman Debbie Dingell asked Dr. Fauci about the threats that he lives with every day. There have been um, everything from harassments by emails, texts, letters uh, of myself, my wife, my three daughters. Uh, there have been credible death threats leading to the arrests of two individuals. And credible death threats mean someone who clearly was on their way to kill me. Um, and it's required my having uh, protective services uh, essentially all the time. Uh, it is very troublesome to me. Um, it is much more troublesome because they've involved my wife and my three daughters. At this moment, how do you feel? Keep your mic on. Terrible. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Dr. Raul Ruiz of California. He is the ranking member of the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic and a former emergency room physician. Uh, doctor, thank you very much for joining us tonight. What was the most important point uh, that you think was made at this hearing today? You know, the most important point was that point accusation after accusation, we debunked all of their conspiratorial accusation that Dr. Fauci uh, through funding, through Echo Health, created the COVID pandemic and then tried to lie about it, cover it up, and suppress the truth. This has been uh, three quarters of this Congress, their thesis and what they have worked tirelessly around to prove, and we have completely debunked it. Uh, and the other thing that was very important is to know the irresponsible and reckless behavior of even though they know that their accusations are false, they continue to spread that information uh, for partisan gain, which is dangerous for two reasons. One, it, it manufactures distrust in science, distrust in our public health agencies, distrust in public health leaders, and it leads to targeting Dr. Fauci and other public health officials for violent death threats, as you just uh, showed here uh, right now. Congressman Raul Ruiz, we're out of time for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.